Brock Purdy. Okay, he's played 16 games. He has seven interceptions over those 16 games. Four of them come in the first 14. Three come in the last two games. Obviously, two last night in the last five minutes of a game. That's crucial time. Can't happen. Brock Purdy has looked more normal than he has ever looked in the NFL. Even though he's the last pick in the NFL draft, I think he played himself into an expectation level where it's like, this dude's making all the right decisions yep. and making all the right throws. He did have moments last night where he was throwing darts. Mm -hmm. Jennings caught a couple. I you caught a couple. George Kittle caught a couple. He looked off safeties. He had great football. But whenever it came time for the Niners to do what they have done over this entire run with Brock Purdy, the ball went the other way. Not only last night, but also against the Browns. Yeah. Are we finding normalcy here out of Brock Purdy, or what do you think it is? Uh, you know, yeah, a couple. Uh, I wouldn't even say bad games, but some just some bad plays, and, and he just started his career career so damn near perfect. It seems so. It's a little slump. I think he'll be all right though. But play two good defenses. Obviously, the Browns. You know, they've been uh, historically good until they ran into the buzzsaw that is yeah. Minshew Mania. Well, and then last night, brother. you know, uh, the Minnesota Vikings, their defense is kind of, I guess, coming into their own based on their performance last night. Obviously, San Fran misses some pieces, but everybody's missing pieces at this point in the season. But, I mean, from beginning to end, I felt like that uh, Vikings defense was on point. Big play giving up with the uh, C-Mac, got caught in that blitz, and then there was some other ones. But Brian Flores has this guy, these guys flying around, Hitman, he'll be on later. He was making plays. His his counterpart back there, Bynum, was making some huge plays, sealed the game. Um, so I think I think Brock will be all right. He had his team in position to win that game last week until, you know, Moody wide right. Well, um, I think he'll be all right. For and that. Moody missed another one, but he hit a big one too for them yep. towards the end and also had another chance to win it here. Oh, yeah. They were still in. If didn't throw that pick at the end, still have a yeah. chance to very much win that game. So it's not like the Niners were ever out of it, even though they weren't playing perfect. On the flip side, Vikings. Hey, oh, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Vikings offensive line hold the San Francisco 49ers defense to zero sacks and 44 dropbacks against Kirk Cousins. What? That makes no sense. Daniel Hunter's out there hunting mm -hmm. uh, on the other side of this thing. Their defense is flying. The Vikings all of a sudden, last year, they were 11-0 in games that were decided by like seven points or less or something. They started the season 0-3, for 0-4. for 4. It was getting bad. You thought the football gods had turned on him. TJ Hawkinson had a big one. Mm -hmm. Now he was a little injured. It was going to take him a while to get off the field. And Coach KOC tells him to get down. And everybody says, they're faking injuries. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they would at that particular time. But that team seemed to have their most full game. Yeah. And Kirk Cousins throws for 300 on primetime yeah. again. Mm -hmm. And everybody brings up his stats about primetime and how he performs and everything like that. How about him going right back to Addison like three times after that first interception that took place on yeah. the third play of the game? How about what he was able to connect with out of the backfield? How about Kirk Cousins stepping in there and being a guy? And Addison proving himself without Justin Jefferson as well. And if you talk to Kirk, he came on our show, I think, and he said, everybody tells me about how bad we are in primetime. And Kirk like kind of said, I think I threw for like 300 yards, had three touchdowns, no interception, but I get it. Yeah, I understand, I understand yeah. that that is a quarterback stat, the wins and losses. Incredible effort there by Jordan Addison there, the rookie who had to make big plays because Justin Jefferson was yeah. out. But do we are we turning on his Vikings team? I know we've said in the NFC North that it's the Lions, the Lions, the Lions. There's still a lot of season left. And if the Vikings are able to play against the Niners like that, mm -hmm. let's assume they're able to do that against everybody in the NFL. Yeah, who knows if they're going to catch the Lions, but after last night it does feel like, okay, this team could go on a little bit of a run in the middle here and you know with the Niners obviously it, it's tough party doesn't look like who he is but Michael Lombardi has mentioned this in the past teams that you know go all the way they start hot and then in the middle they have a lull and then they finish hot and it feels like we're entering that middle lull for some of these teams but if I'm a Vikings fan what you see out of Jordan Addison and thinking that Justin Jefferson isn't even on the field while he's doing this uh, you got to be through the roof Madison he, that was the best he's looked all year too did we know Justin Jefferson was not going to be playing last night how long is he out? Uh, at least I think two, this is his more second more? week. Yeah. Right? At least four weeks, so at least two more weeks, I would assume. Him yeah. on the sideline with that grill oh. <laughs> is awesome. Shades. I need to know, though, like, there was chatter about Kirk getting traded yeah. because this they were just going to punt this season off. Yeah. Now, I can't imagine the Vikings without Kirk Cousins going forward, and it's such a week-to-week -week league. I assume Vikings fans are starting to think that as well. Ah! I mean, I would think so. After last night, too, like you mentioned, the interception on the opening drive, which they've turned the ball over on like their first possession so many <laughs> times this year, and you just think, like, okay, the, the Niners are about to dog walk them. And then they stand back up, punch them in the mouth, and force a, a turnover when the Niners are in the red zone. Like, I think it was the first time this year that they've actually shown some resiliency early, and then they did. I mean, Kirk has already said, like, hey, I'm 
I'm staying here. Like I, I'm not waving my no trade clause. I don't want to have to worry about you know finding a new school for my kids and a new uh, new house just to be like a, a rental somewhere else. Like he wants to stay there, and he is good. You know, <laughs> like he he does what he can. If their defense can play like they did last night, like there's. We still don't really know that much about the NFC, I feel like. They're they're so top heavy, but that, you know, four through seven playoff seeds, like if the if the Vikings can put together a couple good weeks here, they got Green Bay who right now looks terrible next week. Like if they can put a couple wins together in a row, like there's no reason they can't be in a position to make the playoffs Schedule's at the very, end of the season. Very gettable. And the Niners got the Bengals, so you know, that's not necessarily the right team to have at this particular stage of what the Niners are going through. And you do talk about the top of that. You got the Eagles, the Lions, and then the Niners up there. Home field advantage is a big deal. This Niners need to, you know, play that game. I said this on uh, first take. Like, home field advantage of the playoffs, big deal. Huge. San Francisco or Philadelphia, I mean, that's too – very different environments for the most important game of the year. Last year, San Fran had to go to Philly, mm -hmm. and we all saw what kind of took Spe place, even though they got unlucky. Especially at that time of year, you know, going to Philly, who knows what the weather would be, what you have to deal with coming from Cali if you have to go through Philly. But another thing about this Vikings team, last night, that offensive line, you know, the, the, uh, we know who the Niners are on defense, um, but that offensive line, it was like the, the you know, KOC could do anything he wanted. It was running the ball well. The screen game was intact. Obviously, Kirk Cousins standing in the pocket, dialing up downfield. If that offensive line can continue to play like that, um, they can definitely stack a few. Vikings are three and four. You lose a couple more, you still got double-digit wins. Mm -hmm. Still in the playoffs. The right time to get hot is when? Later. Not now. Are they starting that trip as we speak? Their next six are Green Bay, Atlanta, New Orleans, Denver, Chicago, and Vegas. Like, Here we go. I, I wouldn't get be surprised. Here they we can, go. Not a bad time for the Vikings to get going. Uh, and then crazy stuff happens. You know, Addison gets picked off on a ball he, he maybe could have caught in the first throw of the game. Then he rips the ball out of uh, Ward's hands there in the first half. I mean, that was, that was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, and I think that was one of the things, and we enjoy the hell out of the Manning cast as well. They got some augmented reality. <laughs> I mean, he's got some real technologically advanced stuff over there that they got. And he had his kid, uh, Mosley, yep. and his friends <laughs> yep. lining up and doing the whole thing. And obviously the conversations with the guests are good. But, like, the story about Kirk Cousins going back to Addison, whenever Addison, like, the way Peyton broke that down is, like, Addison can't let Ward pick that ball off. Like, there is no way that can happen. And, and Kirk Cousins goes right back to him. Like, hey, got to build his confidence. That means a lot coming from, like, you guys. And are, is that the type of stuff that you're talking about that they pick up on that maybe other media people wouldn't and that you relate to? Well, it's that. And then it's, it's, it's uh, you know, and they got the information from, from Kirk, obviously. But, but just that little thing about, hey, Bosa's out of the game. Now there's these other ten plays we like. And it's not all passes. It's not all, like, down to foot passes. But it might be a certain run, you know, if, if Bosa's – you know, you got to figure out, do you want to run at him and double team the whole time? Or do you want to run away from him and worry about him and been uh, wreaking havoc on the backside? But there might be some plays where you're like, oh, hey, Bosa's out. That means we feel better about a keeper back to his side. Or we feel better about a seven-step hard action taking a shot down the field because he's just a game wrecker. And I think it's just cool things like that. It's cool for the average fan. It's cool for Bosa to go back and feel like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a study. Like, they, they really do, do this shit? And it's like, yeah. They do. I mean, literally, when a guy is that big of a game record like him and Aaron Donald and Miles Garrett, who's you know had an incredible game this weekend, yeah. there's a few guys in the league, and I'm, I'm omitting, I'm just talking about those three guys, but there's there's other guys that are obviously really important. You guys just had a guy on in Harrison Smith who is one of those type of guys where before every play, you got to kind of figure out where 22's at because he's such a great disguiser. He does so much before the snap every play. You kind of need to be aware. There's checks that we used to have based on his pre-snap alignment. Uh, and then there's, like I said last time in the game, there's some things you try and get a beat on their pressure brackets back in, you know, 15 through, or, you know, what was the first year in the league? I think his first year was 12. 12 through whenever, you know, Mike Zimmer was there. You'd, you'd come up with these things like, I know what's going to happen. You know, as long as if Barr is here and he's here and Kendrick is over there and, you know, captain's on the edge, we know this pressure's coming every time and it never, you know, they, they, would, they would do their own self-scout. So, but those three guys I mentioned, those three guys on the front, you, every game you play in one of them, you know, okay, if this guy comes off the field, then there's 10 other plays that we can only run with Miles Garrett off the field or with Aaron Donald off the field or with Nick Bosa off the field. And to those guys' credits, there's not many plays that they're off the field. So yeah. when they're on the field, they're absolute game records. That's what I was about to say about Miles Garrett. I, I don't remember a single play where I was watching because we got to be there and watch what he did to the Colts. And it was like, first of all, 
<laughs> what is that? Yeah, how? How how is that allowed to be built that way? You know what I mean? Like how is he 270, faster, stronger, jumps higher, and seemingly football IQ through the roof? But like that Bosa thing that they were talking about. As soon as Peyton brought it up, Bosa went to the sideline, and he started like, all right, here's the time, here's the time. I didn't know that it was as simple as that at the NFL level. So, like, I think that type of detail you appreciate because it's like, hey, yeah, we all do that. But as fans, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah, if this guy's off the field, let's take advantage of it.